Let's take you now to Egypt, where work is underway to expand the two-way section of Egypt's Suez Canal to 82 kilometers from 72 kilometers. The chairman of the authority managing the Egyptian waterway, Osama Arabi, during his first news conference on the Suez Canal, said it would be too expensive to widen the entire length of the link between the Red Sea and the Mediterranean. Uh, recall that global shipping traffic was disrupted last year when one of the world's largest container ships got stuck in the southern section of the 190-kilometer canal for about a week. Joining us this morning is Professor XN Nraki from the Faculty of Business and Management Sciences, University of Nairobi. Many thanks for having you this morning, Professor. Uh, you just had the story, I mean, talking about the Suez Canal Authority chairman and what he has come out to say. Now, looking at uh, the expansion and uh, the, the budget that is being put for it, a lot of people are wondering, why is Egypt alone uh, the one, the sole funder of the project? From uh, Nairobi. I think the main reason why they want to fund the canal all by themselves without calling in partners is a question of control. If the Egyptians fund this canal, they dredge it, they expand it, then they get all the returns from it and they don't need to pay any debt. Now when you bring in partners, they are going to, to, to ask for some control. They are going to get, get some control of this canal. So I think it's more about control than anything else why Egyptians want to do it alone. All right, um, Professor, looking at the fact that uh, the 10-kilometer projects will cost about 3 uh, billion Egyptian pounds, that's about $191 million, and will also be completed and inaugurated uh, by the end of uh, June 2023. Uh, and many, uh, just as you've answered, is because of control. But are they looking at the monies that will go into uh, this expansion? Uh, don't you think it is rather too much to be undertaken by just one country? I, I think I totally agree with you that if you look at the number of ships that pass through this particular canal, if you look at the, um, the, the number of nations that have a consortium in terms of traveling through this canal, it's a very big project. If you remember what happened when a ship got stuck there, so many countries suffered from that. So we have naturally expected more countries to come in and chip in, but I'm sure a lot of countries would be interested in funding this canal. But as I've said earlier, it's probably more about uh, pride, national pride, and making sure that Egypt has control of this strategic sea route and this strategic national asset. Mm, pride and control. Now, the Swiss Canal netted Egypt a record of $5.84 billion in 2021. Now, this was despite the coronavirus pandemic effect in, on world trade, as well as a six-day blockage of the busy waterway by a giant cargo ship. So we know that it's a viable revenue source. But why has the why why is it taking so long for the widening uh, to be done and uh, dusted? Why are we having this delay? That that was quite surprising because if you look at the amount of money as we put earlier that comes from this canal, it's so much money. So anybody would have ex expected to expand this canal, but you get more ship and get more revenue. So my suspicion is probably the political situation in Egypt for the last few years. You notice Egypt has been having some political instability because of the changing government. And also, I suspect, because of the normal political bureaucracy. It takes time for big government projects to be decided on, about the funding, who will do it, and how it will take. So it's probably a question of government bureaucracies more than anything else. Mm. All right, so people are saying that the uh, blockage of the Suez Canal kicked off the supply chain disruption globally and not the lockdown from the pandemic. So two different things. Uh, but uh, what is your take on this? I don't believe that uh, the, the supply chain disruptions were caused by this ship that got stuck on the canal. I think it's more than that. Statistics show that about 12% of the world's trade passed through the canal, and about 30% of container ships use the canal. But that's not the only reason why there have been supply chain disruptions. When COVID-19 hit, a lot of factories were put idle. A lot of ships that were supposed to be repaired were put on hold. A lot of people were sent home. So the economy shrank. And nobody knew when we are going to get the next vaccine. But when the vaccine came sooner than we expected, a lot of factories were put back to right. A lot of ships were put back into business. So the factories, the supply chains, the ships, and other logistic facilities did not recover as soon or as, as expected. And that brought in a big supply chain constraint that is being felt. 
So Suez Canal might have broken, might have contributed, but he's one of the main factors, but not the major one. Thank you very much for your insights on this developing story, Professor X N Iraqi from the Faculty of Business and Management Sciences, University of Nairobi. Thank you and have a good morning. Have a good morning. <music>